Now we get to talk about the sensitivity of the human ear. We already talked about the, the amazing range of frequencies that the ear can, uh, not of frequencies, but of um, intensity levels that the ear can hear, all the way from 10 to the minus 12 watts per square meter, or 0 dB, all the way up to 1 watt per square meter, or 120 um, dB. So now we're going to ask about the sensitivity of the ear to different frequencies. What frequencies can the ear hear? And uh, this diagram shows which, which ones it can hear. So here's the bottom line captured in the concept. The, the human ear can hear sounds roughly between about 20 hertz, 20 cycles per second, and about 20,000 hertz. And it can hear these as audible tones. So if we look at the frequency on this axis, here's 20 hertz, and here's 20,000 hertz. The ear doesn't hear all of those frequencies with equal sensitivity. If we're going to, for example, produce a sound that's 0 dB, so that's the intensity level, beta equals 0 dB. And what intensity does that correspond to? 1 times 10 to the minus 12 watts per square meter. So if you say, all right, I'm going to produce a sound that is uh, of a different frequency. Oh, I'm going to vary the frequency on a sound whose intensity is the same. Then you're not going to be able to hear this sound at 20 hertz, at a 0 dB sound at 20 hertz. You're going to have to get up here in this range before you're able to hear that particular sound. So roughly between four or 500 hertz and maybe 5,000 hertz or so, you can hear that uh, very, very lowest possible sound. You can actually hear a sound that's a little bit less than 1 dB um, if you're in the ear's most sensitive region. which is right around 4,000 hertz. So what I'd like to do, um, let me show you a demo in just a second, but before I do, if you're talking about really loud sounds, this is very, very soft sound. Up here we're talking loud, really loud. And you can, uh, at this level, you can, you can hear pretty much everything over the whole range if you compare that red line with this red line down here. And um, so let's show you. And what, what I'll be asking you to look for is the sensitivity of your ear. I'll be projecting um, with the YouTube video. We're going to play a sound at a particular intensity level. I don't know. It's probably going to be around, depending on how, the, uh, how high your speakers are set to wherever you're listening. Uh, it might be about 60 decibels or so. You're not going to be able to hear it at hertz. Uh, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sweep the frequency from 20 hertz up to 20,000 hertz. And so you'll be listening along this curve and noting when you can first hear the sound at about 60 decibels, and then when that sound is no longer audible. And, and this test actually depends a lot on what your speaker setup is and, and that sort of thing. So it's not really a, a legitimate test of your hearing. but but it's fun to get a kind of a rough idea about the sensitivity of your ear. And it is certainly possible with this demonstration to, um, to know which, which frequencies the sound seems the loudest. So what I'll ask you to do as you're listening to, to this sweep of frequencies is to ask where the sound seems loudest to your ear. The sound is no, lo no louder, actually, uh, in that range, it's only se it only seems louder to your ear because your ear is more sensitive. You might be able to hear it now. about 
4,000. Okay, so you may have noticed that, the, at least to my ear, the sound was definitely the loudest when it was around 4,000 hertz. I couldn't hear it at the start, I couldn't hear it at the end. Um, unfortunately, for all of us, very few of us can actually hear uh, the full range of, of uh, 20 to 20,000 um, cycles per second. The, um, a newborn baby that hasn't attended too many rock concerts or operated too many jackhammers or whatever is going to hear that range pretty well. But if you're turning your iPod up, there's damage to your ear and there's, and there's hearing loss over time, uh, you won't be able to hear that entire entire range. Um, dogs, cats, uh, bats, and mice all have upper frequency limit that's at least twice that of humans. 40,000, 50,000, 60,000, 70,000 hertz depending on which uh, of these animals that you're talking about and which uh, particular species of those animals. So dog whistles, dogs don't like it very much, but you can get a whistle that will sound a tone that's greater than, uh, than 20,000 hertz so you can't hear it but your dog can't, can hear it. And um, we had a, 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 where I did my postdoc at San Diego National Laboratories in California, we had a woman that worked there and a, and a security system that would come on at four o'clock. And none of us guys could hear it, but she could hear it. We used to call her a dog, but she could hear it. No, I was just kidding. So the, the Cavitron ultrasonic surgical aspirator. So sound is used, ultrasonic sound. What does ultra mean? Ultra means that it's above the audible range. So, uh, and this is 23 kilohertz. So kilo means thousand. So that's 23,000 hertz. That's well above the human audible range. Um, and those probes are used to shatter sections of a tumor. So it's ultrasound, very high frequency sound used in medicine to destroy tumors. Also, ultrasound, you go in for an ultrasound where you're going to have a baby. The, um, and and the, the echoes from the sound introduced into the woman's abdomen is used to form an image. It's a beautiful thing, an amazing thing. Uh, possible to locate, locate that image. That's the end of the chapter.